Hi, uh, my name is Tom Grove and I recently finished my PhD at the University of Edinburgh and I now run a charity called Whalewise. We're a marine conservation charity and we study the interaction between whale populations and human activity to try and inform better conservation practices. When we're talking about whales, entanglement means that a whale has got caught in fishing nets or fishing lines or other types of fishing gear. So what this means is a whale is swimming along and basically it swims through a line or a net and it can't get the net off. And so then that line and net wraps around the whale's body and it creates drag. So it's much harder for the whale to swim. The whale can even drown if it's really severe. And basically, those nets and lines dig into the whale's skin and into the whale's body. And so the nets can stay wrapped around a whale for days, weeks, months, even years in kind of really extreme cases. Um, but most of the time, the whale is able to free itself of those nets. But we can actually tell that those whales have been entangled because when the nets and lines dig into the whale's skin, they actually leave scars. So most, for example, most of a humpback whale's body surface is black. And so then we see these white scars wrapping around the whale's body. The way that this has traditionally been done is by going out on a boat and taking photos of a humpback whale as it dives. So when humpback whales dive, they usually go down to feed for several minutes at a time. They show their tail flukes at the surface. And so if you can take a photo of the tail flukes when it's clearly above the water and what we call the tail stock, so where the main body joins onto the tail, then we can look at entanglement scars in that part of the body because that's where whales uh, often get entangled because the nets get caught around the tail flukes and then they can't go past. And so basically we look at how many images we've collected of how many different whales and then we look at how many of those have clear evidence of entanglement scars and that's how we calculate what's called the entanglement rate. So the proportion of animals in a population that have been entangled. Now, that's a great method, but the problem is that the tail stock and the tail fluke only actually represent a small part of the whale's body. So basically what we're doing is working in Iceland and we're actually working mostly from land because the whales come quite close to land and we're flying drones over whales so that we go directly above them and then when the whale is flat at the surface we take a photo and so with that photo you can see not just the whale's tail fluke but you can see the whole of its body, you can see its head, you can see its big pectoral flippers. And so basically what we're trying to answer is using those images, can we get a better understanding of how many whales have been entangled on any part of its body? And so basically we're trying to update these kind of older, more traditional methods to better, underst uh, better understand the scale of the threat. We're mostly working in Iceland and in particular in an area called the West Fjords. So this is in the far northwest of the country and it's very lucky. It's a very beautiful area of these very sort of narrow winding fjords. And because they're quite narrow fjords and bays, it means the whales come quite close to land. And we were actually able to collect images from 130 different whales this year, which um, surpassed our, our goal of 120 whales. So we're really pleased about that. Now, in order to test how good drones are at looking at entanglement scars, we need to actually compare it with the traditional method so that we can get some sort of idea of how much better drones are. And so we're actually working with a whale watching company, and in particular with a whale watching guide called Judith Scott. And Judith goes out on the whale watching boat every day and takes the traditional photos for us. She takes the photos of the humpback whales from the boat as they're going down for a dive. So we get the tail photos, and then we get the aerial images that we take from the drone, and we can directly compare them. I'm actually uh, really fortunate. So I'm from um, a part of the UK called South Wales, and I actually grew up by the coast and I spent a lot of time looking for dolphins and porpoises from the cliffs and also spent a lot of time on boats quite close to dolphins just because they were out there. And so I think having that exposure when I was young um, was really important and I just felt so so privileged and so lucky to be able to spend this time with marine mammals and in particular cetaceans, so whales, dolphins and porpoises, um, that I realised that I wanted to, I wanted everyone to be able to have that same experience one day. I wanted everyone to be able to 
you know, immerse themselves in nature in a way that I was very fortunate to do. And so that's one of my big drivers for wanting to study um, and then ultimately protect these species.